brave citizen of Staten Island, thank you for your participation in this groundbreaking experiment. You are one of the pioneers. In one week, you will make history. As part of a program that could change our nation forever, you will be among the first Americans to purge. The experiment will commence with the sound of this alarm. For the next 12 hours, all crime within the Staten Island borders will be legal and all emergency services will be suspended. Weapons of class four and lower are authorized for use. All other weapons are restricted. You can purge as an individual or as a group for whatever reason you choose. You may want to settle a personal score or simply release the rage that is burning inside of you. If you believe in the goals of the experiment but do not wish to participate, leave a sign of support outside your home. We suggest a bouquet of blue baptisia flowers, a symbol of rebirth. News media and government surveillance will operate with a heavy presence throughout the experiment. If you are concerned about revealing your identity, we suggest you wear a disguise or a mask. However you choose to purge, you are a true patriot. God bless you and all who purge. And God bless the United States of America, a nation reborn. To the uninitiate, it seems as if the white race is supreme. Once you get to the high initiates, there is a different story. And Nimrod was worshipped as black or white. There is chaos created between the races, so you have the Ku Klux Klux Klan, which is anti-black, uh, and you have organizations which are equally anti-white. This is called dialectic thinking. Remember the Hegelian principle? You create friction between the races so that you can have synthesis in the end and bring about a new world order. So in order to unite the races, the best thing to do is to create chaos amongst the races until the pain of separation exceeds the pain of unity. Do you understand the Hegelian dialectic thinking? It's brilliant. It's sick, but it's brilliant. And it doesn't matter if you sacrifice hundreds of thousands of lives to achieve your objective, because the end justifies the means. Well, now to the 2020 presidential race. While the pandemic has made covering the campaign anything but normal this year, there's nothing like getting out and talking to voters in person to get a sense of what's behind the polls in this tight contest. So last week, ABC's Martha Raddatz headed out on a cross-country trek from Pennsylvania to Ohio, Missouri to Colorado, getting a pulse of the nation about what's resonating in the race for the White House. It has been a 2,200-mile journey through America's cities and towns, some abandoned from the COVID outbreak, some far too crowded for safety, others bearing the scars of racial injustice and the fallout. But everywhere we went, the presidential election loomed, from the suburbs with manicured lawns sprouting political preferences to the heartland where even massive wind turbines and endless fields were dominated by politics. Which is why we began our journey in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Empty storefronts lined the streets of Braddock, the birthplace of steel, once a former industrial hub. Well, I'm Joe Scholler. I'm a fourth generation sheet metal worker. And an ardent Biden supporter. Donald Trump just lacks empathy. Joe Biden has seen tragedy in his life. So I think he has the empathy this country needs right now. And it's personal. The once friendly policy talks with neighbors have ended. It's a lot of anger, screaming and yelling. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to get down to the, uh, to the nuts and bolts of things. John Fetterman is Pennsylvania's lieutenant governor and the former mayor of Braddock. How do you think Joe Biden will do here? Joe Biden's going to do extremely well. Everybody knows who Donald Trump is and everybody knows who Joe Biden is and what he stands for. So any kind of uh, uh, approach to try to paint him as like some radical socialist is shockingly naive and it's going to be absolutely ineffective. As the country grapples with this contentious election, the reckoning on race is front and center. 
President Trump has cast himself as the law and order candidate, a message that Trump's base embraces. What do you think of Biden? Uh, I don't trust him. For these lifelong Hamilton, Ohio residents, Trump's word is gospel. I think he almost walks on water. Have your voice be heard. I purged. I purged. I purged. I purged. I purged because staying in is un-American. Don't let your freedoms get taken away. I purged because it's my civic duty. Show your support. I purged for my family. For the purge. I purged to keep my country great. The Purge election year. Breitbart News is reporting that the president's son-in-law and senior White House advisor Jared Kushner has secured a top Hollywood public relations executive for a key position in the White House. Josh Raffel is a 32-year-old communications executive at Blumhouse Productions. Blumhouse is known for producing horror films such as The Purge and Insidious. One of Kushner's many roles is having the responsibility of overseeing the Office of American Innovation. And according to Variety, Raffle is being tapped for a position on that team. In an interview with the Washington Post, like the incoming president it. announced that his slogan like for 2020 like will be, it. Keep America Great. However, the slogan was already used in the movie The Purge Election Year, partly in response to Trump's presidential campaign. Election Year is the third in the Purge horror movie series, which takes place in an alternate America where anyone can commit crime legally for 12 hours on one night every year. Put into law by the political party, new founding fathers, in order to drop annual crime rate. Every day between now and November to elect more Republicans so that we continue making America great again. And by the way, this is the first for Indiana. Our new slogan for 2020, you know what it is? Keep America great. If Biden wins, China wins. If Biden wins, the mob wins. If Biden wins, the rioters, anarchists, arsonists, and flag burners win. Does anyone believe there'll be less violence in America if Donald Trump is reelected? May God be with you all. All right, you probably have already seen this video on your social media accounts online. Protesters, they set fire to a police precinct in Minnesota as outrage over the death of George Floyd continues. As Natalie Brand reports, the city is now trying to calm things down after nearly a week of unrest. State police officers in riot gear backed by the National Guard moved in to secure the streets of Minneapolis as fires continued to burn in the morning hours. Last night, protesters set fire to the police station where the four officers involved in the arrest of George Floyd worked before they were fired. Oh, sure, it singled me out. All right, smart guy, where's the fire? Over there.
Today, with the invocation of the War Powers Act by the President, I am declaring a state of martial law in this city. To the best of our knowledge, we are opposed by no more than 20 of the enemy. He's hiding among a population of roughly 2 million. Intelligence tells us that he is most likely Arab-speaking, between the age of 14 and 30, narrowing the target to 15,000 suspects. We can further reduce that number down to those that have been in this country less than six months. Now you have 20 hiding among 2,000. If you are one of these 20 young men, you can hide among a population of similar ethnic background. Unfortunately for you, you can only hide there. And that population in the classic immigration pattern is concentrated right here in Brooklyn. We intend to seal off this borough. Then we intend to squeeze it. This is the land of opportunity, gentlemen. The opportunity to turn yourselves in. After sundown tonight, any young man fitting the profile I described who has not cooperated will be arrested and detained. There's historically nothing more corrosive to the morale of a population than policing its own citizens. But the enemy would be sadly mistaken if they were to doubt our resolve. They are now face to face with the most fearsome military machine in the history of man. And I intend to use it to be back on base in time for the playoffs. Thank you for your time. Matthew 24, 4 through 8. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The verse we're going to single in on is verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The way this scripture is worded in English would lead modern English speakers to think that the Messiah was just repeating himself when he said nation versus nation and kingdom versus kingdom. But the reality is that these words have a distinct meaning. The word nation used here in Greek is ethnos, which is where we get the English word ethnicity. Also, the English word nation would be understood by non-modern English-speaking people to be nationality. The word for kingdom is basilia, which means kingdom, country, or leadership over a country. So what we see the Messiah prophesying is about a coming race war or a war among the heathen. Right now in America, and other parts of the world for that matter, we see a divide between races or ethnicity that is growing at a rapid rate. Whether instigated by the mainstream media or not, the tensions are escalating. Even so-called Christians who are supposed to be citizens of another ethnos or kingdom that is not of this world are getting their words in and reacting to their flesh feelings. After the election of Donald Trump, many races have felt like they no longer have a voice in our country. They are reminded of a time when they were lesser citizens and were treated accordingly. During Obama's presidency, white Americans felt like they were losing control, while they felt their money they had worked hard for their entire life was to be taken away through taxation and giving to those that were not working for it. Although neither of these things are fully true, the media has played an important role in affirming their fears. The fact is that this country was founded for and by occultists. They have continued to assert control and slavery through taxation, media, and medical witchcraft. What is better than a slave that pays for their own health care, housing, and food? They would no longer be bound to the burden of taking care of their slaves. They would take a cut of everyone's money and give their slaves the appearance of freedom. Also, they would no longer only have black and Irish slaves, but all Americans would be slaves and would pay their dues. Um, I've heard you put down about everybody that's run for president lately. Who should we be looking at for the next election? Nobody that they offer you. See, you don't have a choice. You don't choose who runs, and you think that if you elect one or the other, that you're going to get a good choice. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you elect if the people didn't choose them, and the people never do. Not only that, but there's a misconception in this country. You think your vote counts. Your vote doesn't count. The president is elected by the electoral college, not the popular vote. What are we going to do? Well, we've got to wake up, number one. The biggest, the biggest goal, the biggest 
task that we have in front of us is to educate the millions of people that inhabit this country and the world. It's not just us that's in danger, it's the entire world. The New World Order will be a totalitarian socialist government. A benevolent despotism is what those at the top call it. We are quickly becoming the property of the government, which is becoming, once again, the Roman Empire. Now, this will eventually collapse, too, but when it collapses, it will collapse into anarchy, and race wars will begin to rage across the landscape, and people will kill you for a can of spinach in your cabinet. And I asked you, should I go out and buy me a gun and protect myself? And you said no. No, that's me. not what I said. I said that you should have those items on hand to protect yourself, your family, and your community. Didn't I? I should already have that stuff already bought. That's right. That's why our forefathers gave us the second article in amendment to the Constitution uh -huh. was so that we could protect ourselves against a government should it become despotic and oppressive. And from it's coming. I believe that. It's coming. Yes, it is coming. Very fast. You have a right to vote, but you are not mandated to vote. You don't have to vote if you don't want to. And not voting is a way of protesting. But if you'll look at how many people in this country have stopped voting, it's got to be the biggest protest in the history of the nation. People are saying, we don't believe in the system anymore. We don't believe you're going to represent us. We don't believe our vote counts. We believe it's a waste of time, and so we're not going to do it. Doing research um, and you know, following up on the Masonic aspect of the New World Order. Uh -huh. And I agree with you uh, when you say that this country is a Masonic Republic, and I understand all of this. What I can understand is, if these people are so after world domination, why would they give us a chance uh, after this great Masonic experiment, why wouldn't they just have it locked down hundred years ago? Because it wasn't a chance. It was a sure thing. They, under our forefathers, if you read their writings, they knew more about human nature than any psychologist that lives on the face of the earth today. They knew we would give up our freedoms in exchange for benefit our liberties and preserve the, the Republic. They also gave us uh, everything in the Constitution that we could use to destroy our own selves. They understood that human nature is such that if we can get something for nothing, and if we think it's for nothing, that's the way we're going to go. And that's exactly what has happened. So it was just sort of a hollow gesture, because they knew what the outcome would be. Then. Well, not only it wasn't a hollow gesture, they had to establish this country in order to give the common man a taste of freedom for the first time in the history of the world. This had never happened before. It was the catalyst that toppled the kings and queens from their thrones in Europe. It took away the power that opposed them. Number two, it was to prove to the common man that he could not rule himself. They knew that human nature, common man would, would, through his human nature, his human foibles and failings, give up everything that they had given us, and then that would be, that would be the reason quoted to us in the New World Order why we cannot have those liberties or freedoms. I see. And so actually, this was set up as uh, the power transference was taken away from the old uh, uh, the aristocrats. That's right, and this, this country was the instrument which would bring into the world the New World Order, and it was all put into the Great Seal of the United States. If you know how to s interpret the symbolism of the mysteries, it's all right there. Who they were, what they were about, and what they intended to, to bring about is, is right there in the Great Seal. These presidents and leaders of the kingdoms, owned by Satan, are friends behind closed doors and laugh at the reaction they get from the peasants through the staged events they perpetrate. Sure, there were times when morals prevailed because the church was in obedience to the Most High, but through a series of stumbling blocks placed before them, they fell prey to wickedness, which quickly gave control back to the satanic elite. The whole purpose and desire of what we do is to wake people up from the matrix so that they will see things for what they really are. The children of Israel, white, black, and brown, had fallen for an enchantment perpetrated by a false narrative called media and entertainment. They have given themselves over to fornication and abominations, which has allowed a curse to overtake them. Please see these things for what they are, no matter how hurt you may feel about your race or respect for your country. The enchantment can't last if we see it for what it is. Today, six corporations control all major media in the United States, including the principal television networks. 
These six corporate entities, in turn, control the information being broadcast on a daily basis. The average American adult watches more than four hours of television each day. The constant flow of entertainment, news, and information that is consumed by the American public shapes their perception of the reality in which they live. By controlling the dissemination of information, broadcasters and their corporate heads are able to control the masses. The constant, carefully shaped messages on television guide the public to predetermined conclusions.